Perfect. Great to meet you. Where are you coming out of? I am calling or joining you from Derby, UK. Oh, wonderful. Okay, I'm in the middle of America in Kansas City, Missouri. Nice. So, you, so yeah, I, I always love talking to folks across the pond because you're in the future and I love the future. So, we're in good shape. <laughs> That's me. Never had that one before. That's good. <laughs> Well, hey, it's great to meet you, and I want to begin our conversation before we get into your life and work with surviving the last three and a half years. How did you get through the pandemic, and how did it change you? Wow. <laughs> it it did it did change me. So from the start, I remember the panic for the doctors. Yeah. Because this was a new, new disease, new illness. There were lots of questions about because we 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 always in whatsapp groups um so you will just see people messaging how do we handle this if this happens and how do we handle this and there was all of that panic and there were always emails from the top um um bras of the hospitals <laughs> saying yeah. these are the new guidelines for this these are how you do this and it was overwhelming yeah it really was so the first thing i did was to put off all my notifications because <laughs> I didn't want to be home yes. and be inundated with all of the panic. If I'm at work, then I deal with it. If I'm not at work, I don't want to deal with it. <laughs> that was the first thing I did. And obviously, because everything slowed down and there were no meetings and there were, there were all of that, there was none of that. I was like, wow, you can actually leave this way, <laughs> you know, because... I think for a lot of people, they had just been, you know, going, go, 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 go. Yep. And no one knew what it was like to just not have anywhere to go, to just stay home and, and to just be still. So there's a lot that I took from that. When things started to open up again, I was like, no, I don't have to go back to what what what, what it was before. I do not have to take evening meetings away from home i mean even the church i go to now used to have um some meetings in the evenings but what they did was they started to have church services in person every two weeks and every two weeks have it in people's homes okay. just as a way to to reduce because people realized that we didn't actually have to leave the way we were leaving, you yeah. know? And that gave us a chance just to, to choose what we wanted to do again, to choose how we wanted to leave again. Till now, I don't have notifications on my phone. <laughs> Good for you. If I want to check my messages, then I go on WhatsApp and check my messages. I don't have it going off all the time saying someone has sent you this. I don't have email notifications on. <laughs> I don't have any of that on anymore because I was like, actually, I don't need that. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I agree. So, huge change. And of yeah. course, that's when I started with the music as well. Sure. Yeah. So you are very talented. You're a singer, songwriter, you're a coach, you're a speaker, you're an author. But let's boil all of this down to the essence of who you are. I'm going to put you in front of a bunch of third graders. It's career day. And one of the kids says, hey, what do you do for a living? How do you answer that child? I bring healing and hope for a living. I do that through music. I do that at my day job. I do that through speaking. And I do that through books. So what did you want to be in the third grade? What was your dream? I want to be a doctor. Did you pursue it? Yes. Okay. All right. So... How did all of this happen? How did you evolve to this point of being diversified in all of these different creatives and right, left brain? How did all this work? So I, music has always been a huge part of my life. Um, I always sang in church. I think I started to sing <laughs> from under the age of five and it was huge in my family. We will sing together. Um, but I thought it was just going to be something I did. Um, in church or something I just loved doing. I never, it was never an option for me to pursue it professionally. Um, and of course I'm a Nigerian and <laughs> you know, the common joke that no Nigerian parent will ever let their child go say they want to be a musician or, you know, they, they all want us to be doctors and yeah. lawyers and engineers. It's the truth. 
Wow. <laughs> so I really didn't think it was an option for me. Um, and then I wanted to be a doctor from as early as I can remember. I remember getting the toy ambulance, you know, the one with the with the play syringes <laughs> and the stethoscopes. I loved it. That was it. From a very young age, I told everyone I wanted to be a doctor. And that's what I did. Uh, there were there were there were bumps along the road, <laughs> but I eventually became a doctor, and then I went into pediatrics, and I loved it. And that was it. I just thought I was going to be a pediatrician, and music was going to be in church. Yeah. And then the pandemic happened, and we all had more time on our hands to go back to the things we loved, you know, ho hobbies that we had loved, but lost along the way due to life you know so for me it was music it was songwriting um i attended a couple of um events for artists on facebook um there was a lot of that going on right so i started to songwrite again i was plugged into a community of artists and i just thought this this is fun you know yeah. <laughs> but um i think because because i'm a believer i'm a christian and i do believe that God plans out our lives and plans out certain circumstances and makes life work for us. Yeah. So unbeknownst to me, all of the meetings and the new friends and the new community was actually just a setup to launch my music career because um, one day I went to bed and woke up in the middle of the night to use the loo. And in the space of five minutes, I wrote a whole new song. And I, and I was excited. I'm like, this is amazing. You know? <laughs> because when you are going back to something like that, you will think, oh, I need to, how do I get inspired to write? And you will think it comes slowly and you need to think and you need to think on it and, and be inspired. But it doesn't just come to you in five minutes. Like I had written a whole song. I was like, this is amazing. What is going on? You know? And I was really excited. I was like, I need to tell people. And it dawned on me. That well, actually, who are you going to tell? <laughs> no one knows you're a songwriter. <laughs> they yeah. don't know you for that. Um, so I got a bit sad. But then I was like, wait, maybe there's a purpose for this. Maybe the songs that I'm crazy about, that I'm writing, are actually not for me. Maybe I, I'm saying I need to tell people because these songs are actually for them. Yeah. So I woke up the next morning and told my husband that... Um, I was going to start releasing music professionally. And he said, finally. <laughs> Good. Um, and that was the reaction I got out of a lot of people that knew me because they had always known that I was really great at music. Yeah. Um, and they had seen that I will do well if I ever decided to pursue it. But I kept saying, I'm a doctor. I don't have time for that, you know? Yeah. <laughs> um, but now everyone was was supportive. And, and that's how it all started. Um, so huge shift because I knew nothing about professional music, the music industry. I had to learn. I had to make sure the songs I was writing was good enough. I had to work with songwriting mentors, the music business coaches, because I was like, okay, now I have songs, enough songs for an album, and, and apparently they're great. Well, I know how to go to the studio. You know, I, I asked from the community that I was on, on Facebook, I um, talked to some of my UK artist friends, and I was like, who produced your last album? Can you recommend people? And this was the great thing about that community, because when this happened, I all of a sudden had every single thing I needed at my hand tips, you know, because I just needed to go on the group and ask. And there was a wealth of information available because yeah. before I had toyed with going to the studio, I actually went to the studio in med school and recorded a song that I, that I wrote and did nothing with it because I couldn't even figure out how to put it online. <laughs> seriously yeah. I only ever sang that song at certain events in church I will just put the soundtrack and just sing it but I never put it up anywhere because I couldn't figure out how to do it and then all of a sudden all of this information that I was missing before was 
available. That that's what I mean by it was a setup because yeah. all of these things were put in place before I actually ever realized that God was calling me to do this. You know, yeah. um. So at that time, what I was really passionate about was bringing hope because there was so much hopelessness around. There was just so much uncertainty. Um, people were just so insecure about the future. Yeah. And I just wanted to bring songs that would give people hope. So my first album was was titled Hope. Yeah. Um, and I released that in 2022. It's been a journey that has seen me grow, challenge myself, learn a lot of things. <laughs> um, but it's been an amazing journey. It's been fulfilling. Wow. And that's why I wrote the book. Yeah. Dream realized. So who's been a hero for you in your life? Who's really fueled your, you, you obviously have very high drive to get things done. Who's been that for you? I'd say my dad is one person who, <laughs> he's been there for me. I've seen him. I've seen him act in ways that only someone really wise would do you know I've, I've learned from him and i've been challenged by him all my life so i'd say definitely my dad yeah i remember remember when i said i i hit several bumps along the road on my way to becoming a doctor um there was one time i almost quit <laughs> someone said look ab you love church you love you love God, you love music. Why are you doing something like medicine? Just do something easier like psychology, something. And I was considering it. Yeah. Because I, I was having a hard time in med school. Yeah. I really was. Um, and I actually told my dad that I was gonna study psychology. <laughs> and he stopped talking to me for like two weeks or something. Wow. Until I sat him down and said, What's going on? Like, <laughs> what is going on? And he's like, you're taking the easy way out. I know you, you can do this. You can do this. Stop trying to take the easy way out. And you, you know, so I changed my mind. I went back to med school, you know, because wow. he challenged me. He did not let me back down and yeah. give up. So if you can meet one person alive on the planet right now that you find inspirational, who would it be? Who would you love to meet and talk to? That's a really great one. One person on the planet. Hmm. Maybe, maybe let, let me let me reroute this a little bit. As a singer, if you could go into a time machine and see one singer live on stage, who would you love to have seen on stage? Um. Do you actually? Do you know my? My um, heroes for music are still alive. <laughs> okay. Okay. Who would you love to see then? If I were to go back in yeah. time and pick someone that their life story inspires me, it will be either, I would say Thomas Edison. Okay. Interesting. Very cool. So you're very highly driven, obviously. And you've gone after your dream. You've realized it. What is that fire for you every day to get up, to face the world, to pursue your dreams, to be who you are, to evolve? Who? What is that for you? It's the feeling that I'm just getting started. There's so much more to do. So much. I've just scratched the surface. I've literally just started and just looking forward to, to what else I can do keeps me going. I know it's not going to be an easy road. Like the plans I have for this year are amazing. So, so I'm coming to the end of my pediatric training in the UK. It takes forever in the UK. It takes eight, eight years. Wow. So this is after you finish med school and you do a couple of years, two to three years of internship. And then you decide what specialty you want to go in. In the States, pediatrics is three years. Yeah. And then if you choose a subspecialty, then you can subspecialize. Here, it's eight years. <laughs> so I'm on my second to last year. But I was thinking last year about some areas that I was still 
struggling with a little bit. And it's just because um, I see these patients a lot and I feel helpless whenever I see them because they don't come in with a primarily medical problem. They come in mainly with a mental health problem. Um, so kids that will come in after an overdose or self-harm or eating disorders. And sometimes these kids are in hospital for months, either because we're looking for a safe place for them to go to or they're they're not eating. They need to be fed via NG, <laughs> NG tubes so they can stay healthy and keep leaving um, while the mental health team worked on the mental side of things yeah and sometimes we will see them and it will be literally any new medical complaints today any any new <laughs> you know what i mean it, yeah they weren't there for a medical problem they were stable but i wish i could do more you know yeah. um and that set me on a path of thinking about what I could do. And there were some things that happened at work as well that, that just got to me. So this year, I decided to, to create a resource for teenagers and young people around mental health. So I'm calling it mental health skills for teenagers. But essentially, I will be interviewing different mental health experts, coaches, mindset coaches around strategies that that people can use. Now, these are not um, things that professionals need to be involved in. Very different from CBT and, and all of that. This is literally breathing techniques, journaling. Um, how can you use music to shift your state and where you are from a, from a mental perspective? Um, words, writing, um, and and there's just a lot out there that people can do. Yeah, you know, community. Just letting people know the power of community because some of these kids, they don't even talk to their parents either because they don't have a great relationship. You know, because well, being a teenager and all, right? But also, some of them genuinely don't want to war with their parents. Um, and also that helplessness as well is present for parents as well. They don't know what to do. So I'm like, okay, first things first, what things can we start putting in place to keep everyone's mental state healthy from a young age? What habits can people develop so that when tough times come, which certainly will happen, you have the skills to navigate it um and what things can you actually can parents use at home with their teenagers when they're going through tough times so i'm going to be doing that i've done a couple of interviews already um i have more lined up i'm going to be releasing it's going to be like a second podcast for me because i already have a, a podcast but i figured if they're interviews i might as well release them as a podcast so maybe a couple of episodes a month or maybe even one episode a month and i'm going to write an album around mental health so i already have like three four songs around mental health it's been a blast just planning this but it's a lot of work yeah but i'm also excited about it because everyone what, what i hear over and over is if I had this growing up, I wouldn't have gone through this thing that I went through. Yeah. Everyone sees the value in it. Um, and it's just, it's just things like that that make me excited because yeah. this covers pediatrics as well. When I'm at yeah. work, I will be more intentional in helping my patients. Yeah. But there's so much more that we can do in the community. Just asking adults to actually talk to the teenagers and to the youths around them. Yeah. I talked to a girl and it broke my heart. Um, I was like, what? Because, you know, they say, talk about protective factors because these are the things that will, that will stop people from taking the, you know, that big step to end your life. You know, you're hoping that they have enough protective factors around um, friends, hobbies, 
good relationship with family, things like that. And I was, I was just chatting and I was like, um, did you want to, did you ever tell your mom that you were struggling? And she's like, oh, I don't want to stop my mom. And I was like, okay, um, what do you do for fun? She's like, well, I sing. Oh, that's great. Where do you sing? In church. You sing in church. Well, how about the youth leader? You know, could you not talk to someone in church? And she's like, the expression on her face was, I, I can't forget it. It was like, of course not. And I was like, that's what that's what they're there for. Yeah, right, right. You know, and yeah. it's just to get people to think about it because it takes a community to raise yeah. children. To, Absolutely. I, I think everyone, that's my mantra for the year. Yeah. We thrive in community. Yeah. So everyone just realizes that the, that the, the people that end up in hospital with mental health problems yeah. They are just missed opportunities in the community. Yeah. Because think about all of the people that they came in contact with, that they could have had conversations with, yeah. that could have had a positive impact. Their teachers, their par their, their friends, parents, yep. youth workers in church, you know, it's just to get people thinking about it, to, to really be aware of the opportunities around them. Yeah. What's been one of the best fan letters you've gotten from your book or your album? Wow. One of them was from um, a friend of mine who has patches where she struggles, <laughs> you know, maybe around mental health or with um, motivation. And she said to me, A.B., your song, she actually sent me a screenshot of um, her Spotify app. Um telling me your song has been on repeat every morning. That's what I'm listening to, you know? Um, another one sent me um, uh, a message and said, AB, your song has been seeing me through my prayer times recently. You know, I just love hearing things like that because the reason why we create these songs are so people can incorporate it into their lives. So it's like a soundtrack that sees them through stages and just seeing that happen just blesses me. Yeah. So of all the things that you've done and overcome and succeeded at and become, what are you the proudest of? Oh, Lord, I will say. My kids. My kids, I love. The fact that they can see me go for my dreams and realize that they can do anything. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not limiting myself. I'm not putting myself in the box. <laughs> My mom is a is a singer in church. She's a pediatrician. She's you know they see me do all of these things, and they're like, "Are you going for a meeting again? Are you going?" You know, yeah. but they also see the impact it's having. Yeah, and I just love the fact that that will have a lasting impression on them to know that they can do, they can, they can go for their dreams. They can really go for their dreams. Yeah. So all of these people in your life, there's all these pockets of people, family, friends, clients, colleagues, fans, in the creative and in the pediatric world, but you ultimately run the show. What's your perception of you? What, who do you think you are? Wow. I am a multifaceted individual <laughs> um, that likes to dream. sometimes takes steps and says yes without thinking through the implications um but loves to go for her dreams because of the impact the potential of the amazing impact that can happen it, it's just like someone said um if you're afraid to fly saying oh what if I fall? Well, what if you saw? What yeah. if you saw? That keeps me going. Just the possibility that amazing things can happen when you go for your dreams. Well said. Very well said. If anyone wants to pick up your book, your album, learn more about you, reach out to you, anything about your world, where can they go? So... It's on Amazon and it's going to be rolled out in many more places very soon, but it's called Pursue Your Passion, Uncover Your Calling. Um, it's a roadmap 
to how I got where I am from just being a full-time pediatrician to having all of these other <laughs> businesses come up as a result of that. Um, if I could do it, you can. That That's essentially why I wrote this book, to encourage people not to, to think their dreams are impossible. They are. They are. Um, so my website is abiaguinea.com. You can listen to music and you can pick up stuff um, as well. So yeah, that's that's me, abiaguinea.com. I have a um a freebie that I that that I created for people. So there is one for artists. It's called Monetize Your Music in Three Days. <laughs> but there's something I created for everyone else that has some of my favorite music on it. But it also has um, a devotional slash journal where I just talk through some of the stories behind my songs. And then I just get you to journal um, around um, maybe certain dreams you may have so you can actually go for them. So it's called um, Seven Days to Becoming Fearless. I will, I will give you the links to both previews so people can pick and choose what they want. Sure. Amy, this has been so good. You're very inspirational. I love the energy and, and the fire that you have. Best of luck. Have a great 2024 and good luck with your endeavor to help the mental health of those that need it. Thank you so much, you. Thank you.